So one of the things that I've been saying for a long time is every time we know that there's a new socket type coming for AMD or Intel or whatever it is, I tell you to stop buying for that particular socket because it's end of life. Well, a recent interview here that Forbes magazine did uh, with Robert Hallock, who's the director of technical marketing for AMD, has just done a Q&A with Forbes that really makes me excited for the future of PC gaming, especially a time right now with high costs and inflation, just keeping people from being able to afford stuff. This might be just exactly what this industry needs right now. NZXT's build is a quick and easy way to get a new gaming computer, and right now they're proud to announce expansion and availability to Australia, the Netherlands, France, and Italy. Build a gaming PC on your budget using the built-in configurator and see exactly how your favorite games will perform. Want to build your own PC but still have the NZXT peace of mind warranty? Then the new BLD Build-It-Yourself kit has what you want. Buy it and build it yourself and NZXT has you covered. To get started configuring or building your next gaming PC, visit the build link in the description below. So you're gonna see me looking down a lot. I'm looking at a laptop actually here. Um, I will put a link to the Forbes article down below. At least I will try very hard to remember to do that. Um, if I forget, you guys know me. I'm, I'm, I'm scatterbrained, best way to put it. But anyway, Robert Hallock recently did a, an interview with Forbes uh, regarding Zen 4 and Ryzen 7000 series and AM5 socket set. So I've been saying recently like, you know, if you get AM4, you're end of life. There's like, there's nothing going forward from there because AM5 is the newest technology. Now, one of the first things that was asked here, and, and the reason why I'm even prefacing this with that is you're gonna see why that, uh, that assessment of mine is entirely incorrect. I mean, we've seen it with Intel, and Intel will rarely allow a generational improvement, like a new CPU to work on an older socket, but you, know, you always have features that don't work. You know, and you can do that now, actually, with, um, with AMD. You can run a newer CPU, like a 5,000 series CPU, on like a 3,000 series board, um, which is, they're all AM4 boards with different chipsets like uh, X470 versus X570, et cetera, et cetera. You just give up certain features like PCIe Gen 4, maybe some additional lanes, stuff that typically won't make or break your user experience. Um, Intel will rarely allow that to happen, but you know it has happened in the past with like Z370 and Z390 specifically with the 9900K. You could run a 9900K on a Z370, but again, you didn't get the full chipset unlocks and features and stuff that you'd expect with Z390. Not to mention Z390 was optimized for 9900K. So I said, you know, AMD's AM4 is pretty much end of life. Now, one of the things we know about 7000 series is that it's really gonna build upon the success of the AMD Zen 3 architecture, specifically the 5800X3D, which features 3D vCache. Now that is AMD's absolute fastest gaming processor they've ever built, and it's even competing for the, for the spot of being fastest gaming processor ever made, not just between AMD, but any PC, AMD, Intel, you know, any CPUs that they've launched. And that's specifically because of the advancements of the vCache technology and 3D caching. So 7,000 series CPUs are really gonna build upon that. And he was asked that specifically by Anthony, who's the interviewer from Forbes. And this is gonna be a quick one. I'm not gonna go through the whole Q&A. There's just certain bits here that I wanna talk about that I thought was the, what, I, what really struck out to me. But anyway, and, and the reason why I'm even mentioning this is it really explains why AM4 is gonna still be around for a while. So the 5800X3D, like I said, very interesting, interesting addition to AM4 uh, and maybe an unexpected unexpected to given ZM4's proximity. So what he's, what he's asking there is like, hey, AM4 and Zen4 are so, or AM5 and Zen4 are so close, what was with this timing of releasing a 5800X3D? So basically he said, I think that you've seen from AMD, I'm not sure how often it's recognized, we've been pushing packaging technology very hard, we get very focused on this Zen or that Zen, this Zen or that Zen and what process nodes we're on, but, uh, this third column of progress is AMD's been making uh, with the monolithic die moving to chiplets and mixed nodes now with stacking and that's five to six year roadmap in the same way Zen has been. So what he's saying is that you could expect this 3D stacking of the v, uh, the, the vCache to be like a six, you know, five, six year thing we're gonna see over time. So just like we saw from 2016 to 2022, well, I guess 2021 technically, when did 5800X3D, whatever. You know, those six years was how long it took for the Zen uh, monolithic to chiplet advancement and technology to really mature. Now we can expect to see the same thing with V3D um, or 3D vCache. So 
What he said is, so the, the, it, the time felt right to show what we can do with 3D stacking. Yes, for gaming performance, but also to give people a technical preview of where we're headed outside of Zen and what we can do for performance without uh, iterating process or architecture. So you see AMD now with three different columns of performance control that are very significant and kind of equal in terms of benefit, and all of them will play a role in our roadmap moving forward. So that includes just the standard chiplet design with non uh, 3D vCache. So Anthony then goes on to say, uh, 3D vCache goes, is this going to be included in all Ryzen 7000 CPUs or are there any standard models and X3D models like we have with the Ryzen 5800X and the 5800X 3D? So what he's asking is, are all future CPUs going to be 3D vCache or just some? Uh, basically, he gives the, you know, the correct marketing answer of something that's not ready to be talked about yet. He says, I can't go into details, but I want people to know that 3D vCache will live on. And there will be Zen 4 with 3D vCache and it's not a one-off technology. So him talking about it being a five to six year roadmap, this saying there's gonna be more, that, that makes sense, that, make, you know, that makes perfect sense. So what Anthony said, is the 5800X 3D the last processor we'll see launched on socket AM4? And this is where my ears perked up. Cause I've been saying, hey, AM4 is dead. There's, a, there's, some, there's some political response here. What I mean by political response is just, there's ways of dancing around a question without answering it while indirectly answering it, but also just like, plausible deniability kind of a thing going on here. He says, I would say probably not. So he's saying it's probably not the last CPU you're gonna see on AM4. He says, I also don't know what we plan to do with socket AM4, but I think what you saw Lisa talk about with AM4 will continue. It will live on and certainly has huge demand both from DIY builders and system customers. Could there be more in AM4? Probably, but I don't have anything specific to say on that. So. I feel like something's clearly in the works and continuing on with that because he wouldn't say probably if he knows like we are not going to continue development on that particular uh, socket set. Remember the AMD CPUs are a pin grid array, which means that all the pins are on the CPU, not in the motherboard and means you could fit less of them on the CPU. You can fit way more in the motherboard socket than you can on the CPU itself. So there's limitations to how many pinouts they can actually have on the CPU. Um, so, that doesn't mean that they can't still advance the chiplet technology or the process size or the frequencies or the cache available to those even to make those performance improvements. So that's why I think he's saying, yeah, you'll probably see more on there. I think it's more like, yeah, you'll probably see more on there. <laughs> sort of kind of think it has a, I know it looked like more like I had a stroke than a wink, but whatever. <laughs> the very next question that Anthony asked is, are socket AM4 and Ryzen 5000 going to sit alongside sec, sec, uh, socket AM5 in the same way we've seen Ryzen 3000 sit alongside Ryzen 5000. Now, here's the thing. A lot of people just assumed that a lot of the 3000 series CPUs that were sitting on shelves were just overstock and inventory left over from the manufacturing process and they'd switched all over to 5000. That's not true. They continued manufacturing 3000 series for a long time in the AM4 5000 series and Zen 3's life. So where that gave people a lesser expensive option to get a still fairly modern CPU. So what he's asking is, will you do that with AM4 and 5000 series? And this is where I feel like he just almost confirms the probably as a yes in this answer. He says, yes, you will absolutely see AM4 live on in parallel, carrying lower price points and more mainstream options. So he just answered the question he said probably to with a definitive yes or an absolutely. So I think that's weird that he was like, probably, I don't know. Will AM4 still have CPUs? Oh yes, definitely, absolutely. So it's kind of like, okay, 5000 series living on is an absolutely, because they already have that process. They've already made it, right? So they can continue manufacturing it. Will they advance it? That's technically what he's saying, probably too. But he also goes on to say that that's not to say Zen 3 is slow by any means. It's definitely an opportunity. There's definitely an opportunity for it going forwards. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think what we're gonna potentially see here is AM4 motherboards on DDR4 continuing on with 5000 series uh, and potential maybe clock speed and advancements there, um, you know, efficiency in the process design continue to be sold. Whereas all the AM5 stuff is gonna specifically be their top tier 3D vCache, like monster gaming CPUs, monster uh, content creation types of CPUs. And probably to be honest, because it's a bigger die now, and by bigger die, I mean bigger substrate that you can fit more on. I expect it to even break the uh, 16 core 32 thread barrier on mainstream. 
I fully expect to see more cores, probably Threadripper level core count on mainstream AM5. Um, I be believe Threadripper is still in the cards to get a refresh, um, but I do expect to see AM5 probably up the core count even farther with higher clock speeds, with 3 dv cache, which makes it very exciting. So Anthony also goes on to say, Socket M4 has, been, has had a gloriously long lifespan, made even sweeter by the new backwards compatibility of Ryzen 5000 CPUs with first generation AM4 boards recently. So they're referring to going all the way back to like the X370 boards. Uh, with uh, BIOS updates to support the newest CPUs. And when you, by the way, a little caveat here, when you update the BIOS to support the newest CPUs, you basically drop support for like the first two or three generations of CPU because they assume at that point, does, you can only fit so much on the, on the, the prom, right? In terms of space and, and the, the size of the BIOS and the, the microcode file and all that stuff. So anyway, they support the newest CPUs and then you just drop support for the oldest ones. And I think they look at it this way. If you're looking to update your BIOS to support a newer CPU, you don't need to support the older one. It's give and take, you gotta make that decision. But that's why he's talking about, you know, support for the 5000 series on first gen AM4 boards. Is AMD aiming for a similar, similarly long lifespan with AM5 or will it be limited to two or three generations? Um, Robert just straight up says, I don't know yet. We're still in early build of AM5. Uh, it releases in the fall, it's a long way away. So we knew second half of 22, but the fall, that's technically gonna be moving on to like Q3, Q, or actually we're in Q3, about to be in Q3 now. Once June is over, we're in Q3. Uh, I'm expecting probably Q4, to be honest, maybe in October, November timeframe, which makes me sad. I wanna play with it now. I wanna put it in thread, the Threadripper build. I wanna rebrand that system, like I said. Um, okay, so now he talks about memory. So a popular question I've seen is whether DDR5 memory will be the only memory type supported across all chipsets. That certainly seems to be the case. Well, support for DDR4 as well as DDR5 considered as well as what you can say about enthusiasts that are concerned about the current high prices of DDR5. Robert says it all comes together as a macro topic of supply and pricing. And what uh, I wanna say is that we've all been in active conversations with all the memory related vendors for months now and want to make sure their supply output matches our supply forecast. What they don't want is a ton of CPUs with no RAM available, a la Gen, uh, 12th gen Intel launch. Remember trying to buy DDR5? It was nearly impossible. Um, he says, we're not seeing any challenges in that supply change and in fact are very excited about socket AM5 being exclusively DDR5. So there's your answer. I'm not surprised by that. I think honestly with the speed of the CPU increase to the 3D vCache that it would need fast RAM to accompany that. I wanna be very clear about that. There will be no DDR4 support for socket AM5. So he clearly says that. This will create the demand and, and economies of scale that doesn't exist today. So what he's saying is had they launched that right now, this moment, there would not be enough DDR5 to probably support the AM5 adoption. Uh, he says chicken and an egg. You need adopters to bring the price down, but if you give them an alternative, they're not gonna adopt it, right? So if you give them DDR4 option, they're not gonna buy DDR5, they're gonna buy DDR4. DDR5 stays expensive. Um, that's just, this is just economics here. Anyway, um, they go into a lot of, ask a lot of the questions about overclocking and all that sort of stuff. So I wanna kinda of give you my two cents about this right now. This isn't the first time we've actually seen this uh, from AMD, now that I think about it. You can right now buy an Athlon CPU for AM4. We have one. I never actually used it for, I bought it and intended to do something with it, I never actually used it. Do you guys want me to do something with that? It was like an $80 CPU that is basically the old, like older Athlon Plus type of architecture. Essentially, it was built off of Bulldozer, technically. Uh, and then it was just adopted to the AM4 substrate and works with AM4. Do you guys want me to do something with that? It'd be like the ultimate budget build. But anyway, moving on, it makes perfect sense that AMD would want to continue to offer AM4 and DDR4 options utilizing a CPU that is very, very powerful all the way down to its mid and low range CPUs to be able to accommodate the budgets and supply constraints that exist right now. Remember, you know, the reason why a lot of you aren't watching our videos anymore or, any, or a lot of tech videos is because of the fact that now that PC pricing has adjusted itself back into reality, it's still a subject of inflation where the overall cost is still 10, 15% higher because the entire world is 10 to 15% more expensive right now. So a lot of folks, are, and, and gas being you know $7 a gallon here in Southern California, which yes, I know European countries, if we convert the liter in Canada, you convert the liter of what you pay to the US, you still pay way more for gas than we do. The point is 
gas this time prior to the conflicts going on in Eastern Europe were less than half of what they are right now in only 115 days or something like that. So to see gas double makes the gas prices are, are, are realistically what drive people's budgets. You gotta be able to afford to get to work. You gotta be able to afford to run your errands or you know be able to, to move around. So now that you can potentially afford the PC prices, you have to pay more for everything else in life, which means you're still not interested in buying computer parts because buying food and paying for rent is more important than a computer. Unless that computer is how you make money to pay for that room rent. It's chicken and egg thing again, right? So you can always justify maybe a purchase if you're using it to make money. I digress. The point is, if they were to switch everything over to AM5 and just end of life AM4, the new technology, look, these new CPUs, if you look at the price of the 5800X3D, it is $600 versus $300 for the 5800X. It's expensive to manufacture anything in 3D. So look, let's look at what HBM and high bandwidth memory, that was also stack 3D RAM for GPUs. And that drove the cost up a ton on GPUs that supported it, specifically AMD Vega, AMD Fiji, uh, Fiji and, and the three series of cards that existed that were complete flops because the RAM speed was not to be confused with Ramstein. The RAM speed was not what was holding back the performance of graphics cards. So now if we're gonna start seeing 3D cache in CPUs, you can expect the price to go up. So you need a realistic uh, option. It also, I would assume, will potentially help with a slight cost decrease of adopting 5000 series CPUs and AM4 motherboards. And, or, they, or they may potentially have this weird overlap where a lower tier AM5 might cost less than a mid tier AM4. I don't, and, and that really is gonna depend on where they land in performance. Uh, but this is a good thing. This is, this is great because it means that we're gonna see options in all categories and all budget constraints, theoretically, as long as they continue to manufacture it and the cost of silicon doesn't keep going up. I and mean, silicon is 10% more expensive right now than it was even a few months ago, which of course is gonna lift the price of everything. So I get it. The economy sucks, but seeing a company like uh, AMD can say that, yes, we absolutely will be continuing AM4 in some capacity alongside AM5 makes me happy. Because I was really worried about the early adopter rate because when RAM switches over to something new, like when we saw the switch from DDR2 to DDR3 and DDR3 to 4 and now 4 to 5, there's a big stagnation in adoption because of availability and price. And then once ha what happens is once it becomes widely adopted in AM5, or not, excuse me, AM5, and the new DDR4 becomes, new DDR, it applies to any of these generations, becomes the new standard and adopted. The previous gen price then goes through the roof because they're not manufacturing anymore, they become rare. And if you're in one of those situations where you want to expand your system's memory and you got to buy an older generation RAM and find matched RAM that works, it's like three, four times as expensive because of the fact that it's rare and not made anymore. So this is the same cycle we've seen over and over and over. Not surprised that a company like AMD would be the one doing this, because other companies have realistically just not been as supportive of trying to make sure that there are realistic affordable options in all aspects of budgeting. So anyway, I can't wait for AM5. This is great news for PC enthusiasts, whether you be a gamer, programmer, um, you know, content creator. Th th this is, I'm really excited to see what 3D Vcash does. And I'm kind of surprised to see, I guess I'm not really surprised to see AMD to be the one to implement it first because they were the first to really move away from, like he said, monolithic chips over to uh, chiplets. And then they've then now increased the efficiency and the speed and the interconnect between those chiplets and are now using vCache, 3D vCache, which is even faster, like ridiculously fast, to see the, the, the profits and the adoption of Zen really get spent back in R&D and making things better. I think we're going to see the, 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 the decade of AMD, to be honest. I think the next 10 years show that AMD is not messing around anymore. They're truly trying to push the envelope. I hope the hype train pulls into the station and doesn't derail somewhere, but AMD has been living up to its promises lately, and I cannot wait to see it. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope this is good news, to, good news for you guys, too, because if you can't buy right now and you, and you know new stuff's coming, it becomes scary because you feel like you have this choice. Do I buy the old stuff now? Or does it disappear and I can't afford the new stuff and here I am with nothing? You know, you probably still buy both at the same time for a while. All right, guys, thanks for watching. As always, we'll see you in the next one.